Welcome to the next lecture on penetration testing. The third step in phase 2 of ISSAF penetration testing methodology is vulnerability identification. After gathering the relevant information about the target system, the next step is to find the vulnerability that exists in each system. Vulnerability identification heavily relies on information gathered in previous steps, which are information gathering and network mapping. According to ISSAF, the purpose of vulnerability identification is to find flaws within the network, servers, services, and other attached information resources. Penetration testers should have a collection of exploits and vulnerabilities at their disposal for this purpose. The knowledge of the penetration tester in this case would be put into a test. Information obtained will be analyzed to find any possible vulnerability that might exist. This is called manual vulnerability scanning, as the detection of vulnerabilities is done manually. In this slide, you see ISSAF steps to properly identify the vulnerabilities exist in the system. And these are some of the tools suggested by ISSAF for vulnerability scanning. Most of these tools are not included in Backtrack, almost all of them, and some of them are very expensive. Basically, they are all performing the same process. For the example, we are going to use Nessus. Nessus is a security scanner that audits remotely a given network and finds whether the vulnerabilities exist in it. It produces a list of vulnerabilities that exist in a network as well as steps that should be taken to address these vulnerabilities. Let's have a look at the example. To run the Nessus, you need to obtain an activation code and register it. After adding a user, you have to start Nessus by typing this command. You can see that we are running the Nessus in Backtrack. So, okay, now the service is started and running. You can access it via web browser. Just need to have the IP address of the Backtrack, which is acting as a server here, and put it into a web browser, adding the port 8834 at the end of the URL. Okay, accept the security. Now the Nessus is initializing. It may take longer the first time you run it. Okay, now you need to log in. Just put the username and password. And click OK here. Now we can launch a scan in Nessus. We add a new scan. Name the scan. Type of a scan so you tell the system when to run it. And the policy what you want to scan and of course the IP address of the network you can also save the report in a file okay now we launch it and you can see the progress window here we are going to scan 30 hosts in the network Okay, now that the scan is finished, you can go and check the reports. You can see the different IP addresses which has vulnerabilities in the system. It's all been classified as 
high, medium and low. And you can have a look at each services or ports available individually by clicking on the link. So the new window opens and then you can click on it and get the specific information about each services. There are more services here. So this is basically what Nessus does for you. Instead of you doing all the scans individually, it has the whole package and does the whole scan for you. There are some advantages and disadvantages using these tools for vulnerability scanning and penetration testing. These tools are very quick in performing the task of identifying the vulnerability compared to the time that you do it yourself. A person with basic knowledge of IT and security can perform the vulnerability scanning. These tools are equipped with the latest exploit, only in commercial version though. So these are all the advantages of using the tools. But by using these tools, everything is done automatically. The tester won't learn anything and his or her knowledge won't be improved. This is the biggest disadvantage of using vulnerability identification tools. After identifying the services and their vulnerabilities in a system, then you have to go through a process of verifying the information and finding the false positive and false negative. False positive is when you find vulnerability that is not really exist in the system. One of the possible causes of this is when banner information is not updated by the developer after changing the version. To verify the false positive, you can ask the system administrator for the list of services running on the system. False negatives are existing vulnerabilities that are not detected during the assessment. False negatives are deadly to an organization. Since these vulnerabilities are not found, no one will fix them, and a malicious user will take advantage of these weaknesses to attack the network. Now we can see the importance of the previous steps. You are required to classify the identified vulnerabilities in the system. ISSAF classification is presented here as high-risk vulnerability, medium-risk vulnerability, and low-risk vulnerability. From here, we start planning the attack on the target depending on the organization requirements. This also can be the stopping point and you just need to produce a report on vulnerabilities in the system. The step after this stage is exploiting the system, so you now become a red team and attack the system. Now we are in a step 4 of phase 2, which is penetration. This topic is very practical based, so we are going to demonstrate an exploit here. For the exploit example, we are going to use Armitage by typing Armitage in the terminal, and it will run the program. Armitage combines different scanning methods to find the live host services available and open ports. It also tries to guess the operating systems. So this is the Armitage interface. Just need to do the scan to find the live host in the system. That's called MSF scan. You need to put the IP address of your network here. And launch the scan. As you can see, all the hosts available in the system are coming here and the scan is still continuing. At the end of this scan, you might see some operating system.
you can see the different scans that the system does from the console at the bottom. So we can see the Arata in 192.168.1.1 and a couple of Windows machines as well. You can see that the type of the windows running on the machines is allocated as well. So you can see what type of windows they're running with Service Pack 1. And you can see this one is running the ultimate. So that would be more prone to attack. So we choose that machine to do our attack. Just add the machine. It was 192.168.1.6. The older version of Windows are prone to the attack called Browser Auto PWN. So that's what we're going to do. So we do the scan again here. Okay, now we have the operating system and everything again. So an auxiliary server. And we launched it. Before we launching it, we need to add some of the values. This is the IP address of the Backtrack machine. The port is 80. And we need to put the path as well. Now launching it. As it goes through the scan, you can see that it's trying all different browsers, even Opera, Mozilla, Internet Explorer, and some of the Apple ones as well, like Safaris. But this attack is basically done on Internet Explorer on the older version of Windows 7. Okay, now the scan is finished. You can see a URL at the end of the scan that in, in this a URL needs to be open on a target machine. You can send it via email to the target machine and the user will open it, like a spam or some phishing emails. Or in our case, because it's just a lab example, we are going to open it in the browser of the target machine. So we just simply type in the IP address of the backtrack machine or the attacking machine. With port 80, you can add port 80 or not, it's up to you. And you can see it's running some script in the background. You can see it from here. Okay, now if we go back to our server side, we can see all different type of attacks launching from this side. And you can see the details in the console of your Armitage interface. Still running. And that CSS tag is the one that we're looking for. Okay, now you can see that in the graphic that it shows the machine is under the control. And also you see that the session is opened. When the session is open, it basically means that you have access to the machine, the target machine. So you can perform all different tasks on it. You are going to do all these different tasks in during your lab. So we just stop it here. The aim was to show you that uh, how you to, ex to run the exploit on a system. The main purpose of penetration testing is to prove that vulnerabilities and weaknesses you found in previous steps can be dangerous to the system. You are going to use exploit to perform this. But you need to do to do it in an isolated lab environment. Remember from the previous lecture we mentioned that exploit to the system can bring the network down. 
To do this step properly, a higher level of programming skill is required. First, you can use the available tools or develop your own code in a test lab. When you reach a working code or a tool for your penetration test, you can take it to the development lab where you perform the penetration test in an isolated environment. The last step is to test it in production system, but you need to have permission from the system manager. After this step, you can verify or disprove the existence of vulnerabilities. After conduction of all the tasks above, the next step ahead is to generate a report for the organization. The report should start with an overview of the penetration testing process done. This should be followed by an analysis and commentary on critical vulnerabilities that exist in the network or system. Vital vulnerabilities are addressed first to highlight it to the organization. Less vital vulnerabilities should then be highlighted. The reason for separating the vital vulnerabilities from the less vital ones helps the organization in decision making. For example, organization might accept uh, the risk incurred from the less vital vulnerabilities and only fix the vital ones. So this is the end of the second lecture on penetration testing. Hope you enjoyed so far. There is a lab for this week as well. Please finish the both labs. The next one would be forensic labs.